Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my upgrade video for the Apple late 2011 MacBook Pro. This is a 13 inch version, 2.8 gigahertz Core i7. And in this video I'm going to be installing this MX DS Turbo solid state drive from Mac Extreme Technology. You can check them out at mx-technology.com. This particular 120 gigabyte one is going to cost you around about the £150 mark. It's a SATA 3 drive, so you're going to get the full speed from this particular SSD. And then I'm also going to be installing an 8GB Crucial Technology RAM kit. You can check these guys out at crucial.com or crucial.com forward slash UK if you happen to be in the UK. And this particular kit has got two 4GB modules in the kit, and that's going to cost you round about the £40 to £50 pound mark. Do bear in mind that these prices do fluctuate, so these are only correct at the time of recording this video. So let me pop this to one side. I'll show you what else I'm going to use during this upgrade. I've got a soft cloth down on my desk here. I also use this Kamasa um, screwdriver. A lot of people ask me where I got this from. I got this years and years ago. It's got interchangeable tips. I'm going to be using the correct size tips to undo the MacBook Pro. And then if you push this button, it reveals in slow motion all of the other tips. So it's a very, very useful piece of kit. You can pick up something like this. I think you'll find it very uh, useful for your upgrades. So that's a Kamasa screwdriver. I'm also going to be using uh, an anti-static wrist strap. Now this comes in two parts. This part here plugs in underneath my desk and it's just got an earthing pin. So it doesn't use the uh, live or neutral, it just uses the earthing pin on my house circuitry. Crocodile clip on this end and then this crocodile clip attaches inside here. And then this goes all the way around and attaches to a Velcro wrist strap. So I'll be putting that on a little bit later on. And this makes sure that any static electricity that's built up in your hands um, is got rid of and it doesn't damage any of the components in your laptop. Now, before I get this open, I do have to show you one more thing. I use this Freecom dock. I'm not gonna show you this portion of the upgrade. What I use this for is I connected this via USB to my MacBook Pro. I put the solid state drive into this slot here. It accepts two and a half inch or three and a half inch devices. And then I used an application called uh, Super Duper. You can also use Carbon Copy Cloner and some other tools. And all I've done is I've completely cloned, so I've made an exact copy of the hard drive inside here onto that solid state drive. So when I do the swap over, it's all ready to just boot up and it should be running exactly as it was before. So let's pop this to one side, turn this over, and we can start removing the bottom of the Apple MacBook Pro. So the correct size bit for removing the screws on the bottom of this MacBook Pro is a Phillips size zero. So let's get all of these screws out. I'm going to speed this portion of the video up because I will take my time doing this nice and carefully so I don't damage any of the screws. So that's all of the screws removed. For some reason this one didn't want to come out with the casing. So I'm going to just lift this up very carefully and it's actually gone down into the body of the laptop, so I'm gonna retrieve that. But that's the back removed. So pop that over somewhere safe. Um, I should be able to get this screw out once I've um, removed the hard drive. It's worth also noting that these particular screws up here, these ones in the top three corners, are actually longer screws. So do make sure that you keep those in the right position. So here we go, this is the inside of the MacBook Pro. Let's give you a look at this. Just point out some of the components. We've obviously got the optical drive here. We've got the battery compartment here. This is the memory we're gonna upgrade. This is the main circuit board. And here we've got the hard drive. This is the hard drive we're gonna replace. So we're gonna do the memory first. And we need to put this anti-static wrist strap on. Let's just do that, and then we are ready to do the upgrade. 
So here we've got the memory, and this is what we're going to do first. We've got two little tabs either side of the memory modules. And to release the memory, we simply pull these two tabs out, and the memory pops up. And then we can very carefully just remove this memory module and pop it off to one side. And then we can gain access to the bottom memory module, and we just move these tabs out again. And the second memory module pops up, like so. And then we can simply remove this one. So that's the old memory removed. And as you can see, these were two, 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 uh, two, two gigabyte modules. So let's pop those to one side, and then we're going to grab the new memory module. So this is the new one, just here. This is the crucial module. And we've got to make sure that this slot aligns with the slot on the gold connectors. So we've got this the right way round. And we're going to lower this into that bottom slot, like so. And once it's aligned with the with the slot, we're just going to push it in very slightly, and then we're just going to simply lower this down. And these tabs will ensure that it clicks into place. Just a simple matter of just a little bit of a firm push, and it pushes it into place, and it is now installed. Now we're going to do the upper memory slot. And again, we're ensure that this tab's aligned in the correct position. Offer this up to the gold connectors. We can sort of raise it up to a little angle and just ease this in, like so. And once that's in, like, like you can see here, the gold connectors have disappeared. And then we simply push down very gently. And not happy how that one's gone in, actually. So we're going to just readjust that. There we go. That's a little bit better then push down and the tabs hold it into place. That is it, that is how the memory upgrade is achieved. All done, and that should now work fine with the eight gigabytes of memory. Now we're gonna move on to exchanging the internal hard drive for that solid state drive. So now we're moving on to the hard drive, which is located just here. We've got a couple of extra screws to remove, just here and here, and this allows us to release that hard drive. So we're gonna unscrew these. like so, and a little bit more. These are captive screws, so you shouldn't lose them. There we go, that should lift out. And this is just a little holder that holds the um, uh, two little tabs on the side of the hard drive in place. So we pop that to one side, and then it's just a simple matter of pulling the hard drive up by this tab, like so, very carefully. And you'll see that there is a, a connector here that comes round onto the connector onto the hard drive. So there's a little sort of ribbon cable. You just need to very carefully just ease that connector off of the hard drive. Like so. Now there are some extra bits on the side of the hard drive. And these are, I forget the right term for these, but they're like star shape connectors. So we are going to remove those and put those onto the solid state drive. You can see here we've got some mounting holes on the side of the solid state drive. So let's do that next. I will speed up this portion of the video. So there we go, that's the four tabs installed on the side of the solid state drive. You can see there. And then we're going to swap this screw bit over so we are ready to start putting the other screws back in. And then we've got to just connect the power and data connectors up to the drive. So we do that. Just simply slides back into place like so. And then we can lower this into position. Uh, we pop this side in first. Actually, I should show you this properly. We've got some holders on the back here, and then these two tabs locate into these two. So we put this in front face first, and then we lower the other side in. So these just rest into the correct holding positions there. That is it. Uh, one thing I did forget to do, let me just remove this again. Just ease this up. Here's I forgot to recover the little tiny screw that I dropped, just in there. 
So there we go, that's the screw. And we will pop this back into position. And then we have to place this holder back, this one here. So we will pop that back into place and screw those captive screws down into position. And this holds the solid state drive in nicely with some vibration reduction as well. Not that it's going to be vibrating because it hasn't got any spinning parts like that hard drive. This should really improve the battery life and the performance of the MacBook Pro. And there we go. So that is the installation complete. And now it's just a matter of popping the base back on, making sure everything lines up nicely. And then we're good to go. And I'll be showing you this up and running with some benchmark results as well. So let's get the base of the MacBook Pro back on. And there we go, job done. One upgraded MacBook Pro. So stay with me on this video, I know it's been a long one, and I will show you the benchmark results both before doing the upgrade and after. So I've done the memory upgrade, I've done the solid state drive upgrade. I'm gonna take you for a step back in time now and show you the system information and the benchmark scores prior to me doing that upgrade. So what you're seeing on your screen now is the fact that I'm running a MacBook Pro Intel Core i7 running at 2.8 gigahertz, and that's a dual core processor. It's got four gigabytes of RAM in there. If I just switch over to my system information, you can see that the uh, storage drive, the Macintosh hard drive here, is a 750 gigabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive. This is the stock drive that Apple supply with this particular model of MacBook Pro. Memory wise, we've got four gigabytes of RAM installed, taking up both slots, so two gigabytes in each slot. And again, that is the standard stock memory that Apple supply on this particular model. So back to Geekbench, and let me show you the score. So the processor integer performance is 6286. Floating point performance, very good result here, 12408. Memory performance, more than acceptable at 5740, and the memory bandwidth at 7148. That gives us an overall Geekbench score of 8405, a more than respectable score for this level of MacBook Pro. So let me quit out of that, and I'm going to switch round to the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test application. Now, the results from this application are going to be impacted slightly, and that is because I'm capturing uh, the video that you're seeing whilst I'm running this test. Now, I've run it without ScreenFlow running, and the tests do improve very slightly, probably about a 10% increase without the disk speed test application running. So we are getting a write speed of around about six, uh, sorry, 76, 77 megabytes per second, and a read speed of around about 80 megabytes per second. That seems to what it what it seems to be peaking at. So not a bad performance from the 5400 RPM hard drive. Not brilliant for if you're going to be doing video editing. You're going to really need a 7200 RPM drive. But now let's take a look at how this performs with that 8 gigabyte RAM upgrade and the solid state drive. So now I'm back with you with the MacBook Pro and the 8 gigabytes of RAM and that solid state. Uh, upgrade done and you can see here 8 gigabytes of memory registering nicely there and the scores are already in on the Geekbench I've run this already and the processor integer and floating point performance we're not going to take much notice of those they have gone down slightly but I didn't change anything at all to do with the processor memory performance has increased from 5740 to 5904 so a good increase in memory performance Memory bandwidth performance, not sure why this has gone down, but maybe it's because it's having to check more memory. I really don't know. But that's gone down from 7148 to 6928, so a decrease in memory bandwidth performance. The overall Geekbench score that you can see here has also dropped very slightly, hardly anything. It's gone down from 8405 to 8392. Now, even though that overall score is down slightly, 
The fact that we've now got eight gigabytes of RAM is gonna mean we can run more memory intensive applications. We can run more applications at the same time and the whole system should feel a lot snappier. Let's just head on over to my Geekbench page. You can uh, head on over to Geekbench and search for Geekanoids. I've got all of my scores here and you can see here the previous one of 8405. If I click on Geekanoids and you can see the scores of all of my machines on Geekbench. So please do check those out. Now back on over to uh, running Blackmagic Design Speed Test. Let's do this now. So this is what I ran before, the disk speed test software, and before we were getting roughly about 77, 80 megabytes per second on the read and write speed. So we're hoping that these increase a lot. So first of all, on the right, which was around about the 80 megabytes per second before, doubled in speed, now over 160 megabytes per second. And the read speed, wow, off the end of the scale. This read speed used to be 77, to 80 megabytes per second. It's now right off the scale at 477 megabytes per second. How awesome is that? So massive increase in hard drive performance. The SSD has transformed this machine. It should also mean that you get a lot more battery life out of the MacBook Pro as well. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these benchmark tests and the upgrade video. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.